Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you what you can learn from this Braden Schnur short ball right here so you can win a lot more singles matches. So first, a big thank you to 12KGP Tennis for allowing me to use this video. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel in the description below. So here we've got Schnur, and he is playing Taylor Fritz. We've got an out wide serve on the ad side, and Taylor frames it. Now, Taylor frames it, and the ball's going to land quite short. And I want you to notice a couple things here. Being able to handle a short ball and either force an error from your opponent or hit a winner is really desired, obviously, on this short ball. you got to attack it. But I want you to notice something very interesting. This is not typically what I see in amateur tennis when they get a short ball, a weak ball, is look at the early racket prep out of Schnur. So he's... His racket isn't all the way behind him, but his racket is next to him as he's going forward. And that's something that amateurs need to copy. If you get a short ball, get your body to the side, get the racket next to you, prepare the racket early. Now, when you get this short ball, your goal, I mean, let's just look at what he does. He just bombs this thing cross court. Your goal is to play the ball around shoulder height. And just check this out. You can see that's exactly what he does. He plays this ball at shoulder height. Now, what stance is best used, and it's not the only stance, but what stance is best used on a shoulder level ball? And it's an open stance. So you can see as he's going forward, he plants his right foot. An open stance is if you're moving to the right, the last step you take prior to contact is with that foot. If you're moving to the right, that means your right foot. And it doesn't matter if you're a lefty or a righty. An open stance is the same no matter what. So he's going to get into an open stance. He's going to play this ball. I love this left arm reaching out kind of like slightly toward the right of the ball, but I love that. It just creates this great coil. And he's going to now play this ball at shoulder height. You want to play the ball around shoulder height because you want to make sure that you're contacting higher than net level. You see a lot of players, they let this short ball drop, and now they're playing the ball around knee level, and now you've got to really lift this ball up over the net, and you can't drive the ball as effectively. So early racket prep, get, you're planning on playing that ball around shoulder level, so you're going to get into that open stance. Now look at this contact. I love this. Look how his head is just right on contact. He is not, there's, his body is rotating. Look at his shoulders. Look at his shoulders rotating, but his head is staying still. In fact, he's actually even more focused from here. You can see the ball coming in. It's really focused on the contact. And at contact, and this is something that I'm always explaining, is you want to have, let me draw that line a little better. You will always want to have your non-hitting hand either at the height of contact, which is, you know, his left hand. You either want it at the height of contact or a high ball or higher than contact if it's a more medium or low contact. So it's really important that he's got this hand up and you don't see most amateurs doing this. What you see is that this non-hitting arm from here drops. Even if they do get it up, it normally drops and then actually impedes hip turn. So when you move your non-hitting hand out of the way, keep it up and it'll actually help you to turn your hips and turn your shoulders into the ball. He finishes over the shoulder, but you can see that it's not a severely upward swing, but he's not swinging down. He didn't swing up a lot, and he, but he definitely didn't swing down. I made a video a few weeks ago, or I would say maybe like a week ago, on Marin Cilic doing a similar thing here with a, with a short ball, but he was actually hitting it over here. Um, and he, I, I talked about how he's swinging slightly up through contact and, and people say, aren't we supposed to swing down? Aren't we supposed to swing down as we hit this ball? And no, you don't want to swing down. Let gravity and spin bring that ball down. You can see that he slightly, and I'm talking about probably three degrees, slightly closes his racket face prior to contact. Since he's going to be driving this ball and not really brushing, he's not going to get a lot of, he's not going to need to close his racket face, but he is swinging slightly up. This is, he is not swinging straight across as he hits this ball. He is swinging slightly up and that ball has topspin, but it's not severely up. That's why his finish is basically to the top or kind of the, the top corner of, of his left shoulder. And then he lands in that open stance. You can see he uses what's called a mogul. He's in an open stance. He hits at shoulder level. Now watch, his legs never cross from that point. He lands 
in an open stance. So that's called a mogul. When you are in an open stance, you hit and then you land in an open stance again. So when you get a short ball and you recognize, okay, I'm going to be able to pound this thing, prep your racket next to you, plan on hitting this ball at shoulder height. You're going to have to stay pretty far away from it. Don't get super close to it. That's a really common mistake. Don't get super close to this ball. The ball that is played at shoulder level is typically a ball that you're going to have to play the farthest away from your body. Get into an open stance so it's going to be easy to turn the hips into this shot. Absolutely love that his non-hitting hand is the height of contact, yet his head is still fixed (laughs) on the ball. This is just awesome. Love it. And then he follows through over the left shoulder landing in that mogul stance. And mogul, again, is just like he's a skier and he's kind of going like this, going back and forth with his his lower body. Man, look how much movement there is with his racket. When I do this, look how much movement there is with his racket, but how still his legs are. Absolutely love that. So let's watch this in its entirety three or four times. Um, and just so that you can see the speed and and the technique that he's using so you can copy it in your game. So I want you to go out and film yourself playing so you can look at how you react to short balls. And if you use what you've learned in this video, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.